Hey guys, welcome to the New Waiters Training Part 2. In Part 1, we already run some of the basic stuff that you have to know on your very first day on the job so you can get a smoother transition to the new job and have an easy time with your colleagues and your guests, of course. Now, today it's going to be much more complicated. I assume that you have already learned everything from Part 1, how to serve tables, how to bust tables, how to set up tables, and all the little client things that you just have to know on the very first day, table numbers and positions of the seats and everything like that. So, let's get started. Part 2 is about making good money with good service, being efficient, being fast, and of course, you have to know how to fillet a fish, how to carve a meat, how to open a bottle of wine, how to present a wine to the table, and all these little things, details that are really into our job, that are really more special, and uh, you have to perform in a special manner to be able to impress your guests and, of course, to make more money. Coming up right now. Hey guys, Ned here from Waiters Academy, helping you make a lot of money and have a great life working as a waiter. Today, in part two of the New Waiters training series, we're going to talk about filleting a fish, carving meat, opening a bottle of wine, presenting a bottle of wine. And you see, it's a whole new level of skills that you have to acquire in order to perform a job the best way you can and make good money because that's what impresses guests. If you do all those things with authority, with uh, skills that uh, fleecing, that you don't have to worry about, you don't sweat, you don't shake, the guests see that and they appreciate that. Hey guys, no kidding. If you are going to work in a nice restaurant and be the best killer in the world and make a lot of money, you have to know a lot about wines. Wine is your best friend. Selling good bottle of wine increases your authority in front of the guests, in front of the co-workers. Put some more money in your pockets. But of course, you have to know how to do it and very important, please don't sell wine to a guest before you ask what they like in wine. Because it doesn't matter if the bottle of wine you're selling, it's amazing. If it's a barrack wine, really heavy, full of tannin, and you're selling to a guest that wants something fruity, light, easy drinking, you'll be in a lot of troubles. And those wines are usually expensive. And the guests say, no man, that's not the wine I'm looking for. I don't want to drink this wine and I don't want to pay this wine. So be careful. We are doing a whole series about selling, presenting, learning and pouring wines. That's coming up in the next couple of weeks. In this video, I will cover only the basics. Let's assume that you're a new waiter and I will suggest that you are not trying to sell wines right away. Please take the wine list, like I said in part one, home, learn it, learn the wines, test the wines, make sure you know exactly which wine is good, which one is not so good, and the characteristic of different wines. Because the guests are different. They want really heavy barrack wines, they want something really light, they want something in the middle. And you have to be able to distinguish the different bottles of wine and what you should suggest to this guest. So, at first, don't try to sell wine, just make sure that you're really good at presenting the wine that the guests already order and opening the bottle of wine and then pour the wine. Okay, so let's start with presenting a bottle of wine. If the guest takes the wine list, he's looking about what kind of grapes this bottle is. You, maybe the, the name of the, the, wine, the winery because it's very important. You know, if you order French wines or Italian wines, it's very important where the wine comes from and who's the winter. And of course the year, the harvest, because different years 
It's totally different test. You can take Tinanello from 212, 210, 26, and it's gonna be different wine. It doesn't matter, it's Tinanello, it's from the same grapes and it's from the same place. It's different wine, different year. So, when the guests order a bottle of wine, most probably he remembers the name and the year of the bottle. So it's very important when you bring the bottle to the table and you present it to the guests to name the name of the wine, the year and the winery. So if you bring this bottle, I will say that's a Cabernet Franc from 2010, Kurt Anger. Sometimes it's good if you name the region that's made. It's a good thing that to know which year stays in the wine list. That's the biggest problems usually we have. If you don't know that the year on the bottle match the year on the menu, and you bring the bottle to the guest, and it turns out that on the wine list it says 212, and in the bottle is 211. Okay, that's not going to be a problem because 211 was better year than 212. But if the bottle is 212 and on the list stays 211 then you have a problem because most of the time those guests that order good wines they know that 211 is better than 212 and if you bring them 212 they will be disappointed they're not going to want the wine they're not going to drink the wine most of the time so make sure that the year on the wine list and the year on the bottle passed and of course make sure this is the wine that the guests order Sometimes we have from the same Kurt Anger couple different wines. One is Cabernet Franc, one is Cabernet Sauvignon. If you bring Cabernet Sauvignon instead of Cabernet Franc, you'll be embarrassed again because the guests know exactly what they want most of the time. So, you go to the table, you present the wine. You name the name of the wine, the year, and the wine. <laughs> Now guys, I don't want to tell you that opening a bottle of wine is an easy thing, you can learn it so fast and blah blah blah, things like that. No, it's not an easy thing. Of course, everybody can open a bottle of wine. I've seen people doing this on the front of the table, uh, whatever, you can not imagine what I've seen from the uh, waiters, head waiters working in a five-star hotels, uh, restaurants that cannot open a bottle of wine. First of all, to be able to open a bottle of wine, you need a good wine opener. You're gonna struggle if you have some something that's not efficient, guys. And when I'm saying about good wine opener, I'm not talking about nothing fancy. Most of those fancy wine openers are total junk. I have worked with any kind of fancy you can imagine, and it's not worth it. This little friend of mine, this little friend of mine, I think it's, it costs on Amazon about 5 euro or 450, something like that. I'm gonna put a link down in the descriptions. You can go through the link and just buy one of those for 450 or 550, and this way you can support the channel too. But this one is exactly what you need. You don't need 20, 30, 100, 200 dollars wine opener. Make sure it's with flexible shoulder. Yeah? No fancy stuff here, no nothing. Everything is really clean. That's only thing you need. Make sure that your knife is sharp. Okay? That's very important before you opening the bottle of wine because if it's not sharp and you try to cut the foil, it's not gonna be a pretty thing. Okay, so basic but very efficient and that's all you need. No fancy stuff, don't spend money on those, they're not working good. This is all you need, 450. Opening a bottle of wine, you will find a lot of videos about that, you'll find a lot of information about that. 
I would say and I would suggest you just keep it very simple, very efficient. Of course, if you work in one or two star Michelin restaurants in something really special in Las Vegas or anywhere in the world, they have a wine set up for you and you open it the way the setup goes. You have a plate, you have napkin, you have everything prepared and you do it just punct by punct like the managers will show you anyway when you start the job there. Okay? But right now I'm talking about 90% of the restaurants. You bring the bottle and you have to open the bottle in front of the guest. Don't do stupid things like that. Presenting the bottle. Yes, that's my bottle. And then you disappear. You go to your side station that nobody sees you. And you open the bottle there. And you bring the bottle to the guest and it's already open. Because how the fuck the guest will know that this is the bottle you presented. And it was not open three hours ago. And all this crap. No. Learn to be efficient to open a bottle of wine standing up in front of the guest. That's all you need to know. That's 90% of the wine service in 90% of the restaurants in the world. You will have to be able to do that. That's it. Simple as that. So learn it and start doing it. And the more efficiently you do, the more impressed the guests are. And you earn some more respect and some more money. This is the bottle that they order. Assuming that you're not a lefty, you hold the bottle in front of the guest with the label to his face. You hold it tight. Most of the time, the trainers will tell you that you have to make a cut through the whole freaking thing and things like that. A lot of people do it squeezing, turning the bottle. It's not the right thing to do because the label has to face the guest all the time. Maybe you, wrong, you brought the wrong bottle. And maybe at the first moment he didn't notice that. But while you open the bottle, he has a chance to take a look again and see that something is not right. The ear doesn't match or the wine doesn't match. Like I said, Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon from Kurt Angerer, the same bottle. The only difference is that here is Cabernet Sauvignon instead of Cabernet Franc. So it's very easy to get confused and of course the guests also can get confused. But when the label stays at his face all the time, he has a second chance to check the wine and say, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. this is not the wine I ordered. Okay, I'm sorry. So that's the right thing to do. You keep the bottle of wine in front of the guest, to his face. How you make the cut then? Don't worry about it. You don't have to make the whole cut through the whole bottle. Okay? You start with the right hand and you go all the way deep as much as you can. And you start squeezing nice and easy. Okay? You don't have to cut the foil from corner to corner. For example, the, main, the way I made a cut right now, you can see here in the back, it's not cut. But you don't have to worry about that. Okay? Just keep it like that. You've done everything right until now. The label is in front of the guest. You have made the cut. Nice and clean. Then you make another cut, straight forward, okay? Now, all you have to do is, with your edge on a knife, go under the foil and just cut it, okay? Now, this is not cut, but it doesn't matter. You already open the foil, just hold it and cut it. Now guys, when you open a bottle of wine in front of the guests in a restaurant, you will have to have always a white napkin on your hand. I don't have a white one, but this works too, just to show you how it works. This napkin used to stay like that, you have to stay like that. When you make the cut and you remove the foil, 
Make sure you take the napkin and smooth the edges of the foil, just a little bit, that's enough. So you don't have particles that stay here and when you put the wine they fall down on the, with the wine in the glass and then it's really not pleasant. So you just take the napkin, you smooth it out a little bit, clean the top and put it back on the head. Yes, now. You have to learn to work with one hand with your knife. Huh? To open the cutter, to close the cutter, to open the shoulder, and of course this. Now you hold the wine like that, and you hold the wine opener like that. Make sure you go straight to the middle. Put your right finger here so you can have more balance. Stuck it in the middle and go straight. And then you just turn right. You don't have to push, you don't have to do nothing. If it's a white wine, maybe you don't have to go all the way in because most of the white wines don't have this big cork and uh, you don't want to go through the cork because sometimes when you go all the way through the cork, some of the corks will fall in the bottle, in the wine, and then when you pour it, it's gonna fall in the glass, and that's not pleasant. But when it's a red wine, especially Italian, make sure you go all the way in. Now, all this time, I keep the bottle with my left hand just like that. Keep it strong, just keep it, and don't move the bottle around, don't move the hand around, don't move nothing. Now, we are in this position, you are going to have to help yourself with, with the right hand. Hold the bottle, open your left hand and just bring the shoulder down. On your first step, pull it a little bit, then go to the second, pull again, don't pull it all the way down all the way up, okay? Now, from this point, I've been doing this. Now I go up and just with this finger, very nice, very easy, keep pulling the cork. When you feel the cork is already moving, just go sideways. You hear one little pss. You don't want to hear pop. No pop. This is in some other places, not in a fine dining restaurants. Okay? So, you squeeze the cork a little bit sideways, you hear just a little tss, and that's it. The cork is here, the wine is open. It's a different policy. Some restaurants don't want you to smell the cork because there's a lot of times that the cork will smell like cork, but the wine is perfectly fine. And you don't want to get confused. Now, if you're a really experienced waiter, yeah, I smell the cork. It smells perfectly. It smells barrette, it smells bouquet, it smells... It's amazing wine. You know, Cabernet Franc from Angerer is amazing wine. Anyway, you have the cork here and the wine here. But you have to pour the wine with the right hand, because that's how we do it. You take the cork, take the wine opener, you take the wine, make sure that the label stays on top, so you squeeze a little bit, and that's your position. When you pour the wine for the guest, he should be still able to see the label of the wine, because even right now, it could be a mistake and you still can save some pride or some of the wine before you pour all the glasses okay so you pour the wine with the label up so you can see it and the guests can see it. keep your cork in your left hand until you're pouring the wine you pour a little sip for the guest that ordered the wine so he can test it most of the guests know what exactly testing should be 
at all. They don't test how the wine tests. They should test if the wine is good or it's a bad cork and the wine is not good. But I would say 90% of the guests, they smell the wine, they test the wine, oh, it's excellent and things like that. And then you go and start pouring first for the ladies, then for the other gentlemen, and then the last person that you pour the wine is the guy that ordered the wine, actually. Don't forget that because a lot of times waiters pour a little sip for the guy that ordered the wine, then pour everybody else and they forget to come back to this guy and fill this glass also. So don't forget the guy, it's very important, he will get mad. Now put the wine on a side station. What's the rule in your restaurant? Sometimes the wine stays on the table, sometimes stays on the wine station. Usually the wine stays on the wine station and you have to keep pouring the wine for the guests the whole night. Make sure they don't forget the glasses and things like that. But put the wine on the side station. Take the cork out. Don't throw it away. Make sure you have the cork next to the wine bottle. In case the guests want to smell the cork, because when he tested the wine, something was not so good. You bring the cork and he can smell the cork too. What's the policy of a bad wine? You will ask your manager and they'll explain for you. Usually, if it's a cork, it's a cork, you can smell it too, the manager can smell it too. We change the bottle of wine, but you don't have to worry about this thing. If it's a cork, you take the bottle of wine away, you call your manager, you tell him, hey, this wine is not good, and he will deal with that. He will give you a new bottle of wine, or he will deal with the guest. That is how we present wine, and how we open a bottle of wine and pour it for the guest. As I said, Different restaurant, different rules, but 90% of the time that is a normal restaurant and normal wine service. Of course, when you get to the top level restaurant, you will have a wine setup and you're gonna have follow the procedure of opening wine just punk by punk with the wine setup. But that's a totally different story. Like I said, we are doing a whole wine series and um, I will cover all those stuff in the wine series. Here it's just the basics. Please don't go to the table, don't put the wine in between your legs, don't pull the cork and make a big pop and maybe even splash of wine just goes out and things like that. It's embarrassing. Learn how to open a wine nice and easy. Just the way I show you, don't do nothing more special than that. This is the perfect way you will impress the guys that because you're efficient and you're quick and that's what all it matters. I guess enough for wine, for uh, beginner waiters, that's enough for sure. We're jumping to the second topic. Food service on the table. How we do food service on the table, how we fillet fishes, how we fillet how we carve meat and how we serve from a food tray to the plate. Coming up. Hey guys, I'm told that this video is getting close to 30 minutes and that's a pretty long tutorial. So we're gonna have to leave the fish filleting and the meat carving and the serving from a food tray um, for the part 3. I guess that's gonna be enough. As I said, wine is a very important topic. It's a long topic. Um, we discussed a little bit longer than I was expecting, but uh, it's worth it. Pay attention to the wine because it's going to help you a lot in your future career as a waiter. Please subscribe to the video if you like it, uh, like it if you like it and uh, I'll see you soon, next video coming next week, peace.